Good morning. My name is Father Ben Horn. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Lexington. It's not football or basketball season, so I hope we can be friends. First of all, to the Blatchfords, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the gift of your son, both for the church and for me. Thank you for my brother. Today is Corpus Christi, the feast, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Venerable Fulton J. Sheen said that the greatest love story of all time is contained in a single host. The greatest love story. I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget what love is. Today's world has forgotten what love is, right? Just living in it, listening to the music and watching shows. I mean, the way we talk about our sports teams and we talk the way we talk about our families. Honestly, how many people in this room have said, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, how many people in this room have said, I love the Tennessee volunteers? (laughs) Right? I'm gonna take flack for that when I get home. But then we also use love to describe our closest family members. Something's missing in that, isn't it? Fortunately for us, we can communicate our love in so many more ways than just words. Right? It's the little things in life. It's a bouquet of flowers for no reason. It's grand gestures, it's little favors. We exchange rings and we make vows. God has done the same with us throughout history. His love story is told in vows to his people. But we are a forgetful people, aren't we? Let's go back to the very beginning with Adam and Eve. In the fall... The evil one is talking to Eve about what will happen if she eats the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right? And she says, oh, we can't eat it. No, we can't even touch it, lest we'll die. And the evil one says, surely you will not die. God knows that if you eat it, you will come to be like God. And Adam and Eve listened to this promise and they ate the fruit of the tree. You turn your Bible back one page and what's it say? They were made in the image and likeness of God. They forgot who they were and who God was. In our first reading today, it's from the book of Deuteronomy. Listen to what Moses says to the people. Our reading started out, Moses said to the people, remember. Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert. Remember that he's fed you. Remember that he's given you water. The Israelites were not good at remembering. When you get home, read the book of Exodus again. God delivered them, right? They had the plagues. They got them through Passover, through the Red Sea. And they got to the desert. And they started, started complaining about the food. Oh, if we just had the leeks and the flesh pots from Egypt you're free and you're worried about your food. We forget, we forget about God's generosity in our life sometimes. But the greatest love story of all time is contained in a single white host. Today in our gospel, we hear Jesus During the second Passover of John's Gospel, in John's Gospel, there are three Passovers. The first one's in Jerusalem. This is the second, and the third one is also in Jerusalem, the one we're most familiar with. 
his passion, death, and resurrection. But this second one, it's called the Bread of Life Discourse. It comes from John 6. And John 6 is this amazing passage, and it's over the course of two days. On the first day, he feeds the crowd miraculously, right? Hearkening back to Moses, calling down bread from heaven. And then on the second day, he teaches about the bread from heaven, about what the real bread from heaven is. And it's an amazing story. Because he's got all these crowds that are so enthralled with him, right? They're seeking this bread. And so first, as he's teaching them, he's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, how he, how he is the true bread from heaven. And what do the crowds do? First, they start murmuring. You know, you can just hear the low rumble. He said something like, everybody's kind of going, what did he just say? And then he says it again, and what do they start doing? They start quarreling. And so Jesus turns to the crowd, and this is what he said. He said today's gospel to them. They were fighting amongst themselves, and he has five declarative statements in a row saying that it is really him in the Eucharist. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my food, my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. For whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Jesus couldn't be more clear here. And right after he addresses the crowds, he turns to his disciples. And his disciples go, you know, Jesus, this is a hard teaching. How are we supposed to believe this? You know what Jesus says? He said, what if you saw me coming up, going up back up to heaven? Would that be proof enough? And they said, oh, this is a hard teaching. And some of his disciples, those who had been following him, listening to his teachings, they turned away. And then this teaching, he... He bet the very foundation of the church on the teaching of Corpus Christi. He turns to the twelve and says, are you going to go also? And Peter says, Lord, where will we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Jesus has the words of everlasting life. I think it's profoundly providential that Father Neil, is it Father Neil or Father Blatchford? Okay. It's Father Neil or Father Blatchford, whichever one you prefer. So I think it's profoundly providential that today the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ is Father Neil's massive thanksgiving. I don't think I've ever met someone who has as passionate about the family as Father Neil is. And the reason why today is so providential is because today we celebrate Jesus' nuptial relationship with us, his marriage with us. He, he takes bread and says, this is my body. That's marital language. Today, Father Neil gets to offer Mass. Gets to offer Mass for us. He's concerned about family just as our Father in Heaven is concerned about family. The greatest love story of all time in this Tiny white host harkens back to the very beginning of God's love story with humanity. This progression from a couple to a family to a tribe to a nation to a kingdom to a church. And maybe you say, you know, Father, you had family in there, but a kingdom is not a family. And you're right. But what is the relationship that God has with us in his church? Right? He's given us spirit of adoption. It's a father calling his children home.
So Father Neil, that is what I see most in you. The Father has given you his heart. You have shown me the heart of the Father. A heart for the lost and the broken and the hurt and the abandoned and the orphaned. I've never met someone quite so easily a family member as you. And your fatherhood is desperately needed in the world today. Is desperately needed by people who find themselves abandoned and orphaned and think there is no one. You are desperately needed. Today, and for the rest of your life, you will show us the Father's love. Perfectly seen in His Son, offered for us on the cross, and made manifest in your life over and over again. All of you, please join me today in praise of God and thanksgiving to God for this, our brother, our son, our friend, and now our father. I love you, brother. And for all of us who forget, tell us the story again. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.